Virgo, welcome to your Lionsgate reading going from the 8th of August through to the supermoon on the 30th. Um, I've done the collective reading. Uh, we're going to be taking back our power. This thing's going to be exposed, I think, in a way that we're going to realise that we've entrusted a lot of our resources, emotional as much as financial, as much as physical, uh, in um, various systems, and uh, it's not really being used to, it's being used in, sort of like to impede the evolutionary process of the human race in a way. And I think that's coming to the surface and it's going to change the fortunes of so many as we go forward. Um, and it's a time of manifestation. So, yeah, what are you going to manifest out of it, um, Virgo? Did I call you Taurus earlier on? I do apologise. If I did, did I call you Taurus? I hope not. If I did, sorry about that. I do apologise. Right, let's get into your um, reading. Let's see what the overall energy is. You get the Nine of Pentacles. Where's that over there? Nine of Pentacles. The clarity, the overall energy of the Lionsgate reading is um, using the intuition to actually convert our um, uh, your intuition, our collective intuition, into reality. And the reality for you is that there is a load of possibilities. The question is, is what are you going to take first? And sometimes this, because we got the nine of pentacles on the relationship side in the collective there. And um, it's that's in the negative side of the collective. So, And it was about sort of like retaking back our emotions, that we have an abundance of emotions uh, and energies and stuff like that. And we've got to stop fighting over them and trying to beat the other person rather than being part of the evolution. You know, and, and, you know, redirecting it. And I think here is, um, for you, I think you do have a lot of abundance around you at the moment. Um, you know, we're going to be going into your birthday season. And happy birthday to those of you who are having your birthday at the beginning of, at the end of uh, August. At the beginning of the um, your Virgo sign. Uh, happy birthday to you. And I think this is where you're going to start realising there's a lot of possibilities actually at your disposition. Uh, more than anything else but it is connecting to everything that is around you in order to do that and that's what the manifestation process is all about between the 8th and the 30th so um yeah let's see what's going on on your karmic message you have the moon so on the karmic collective message it was playing smart and realizing the steps that we need to take in order to manifest the dreams and aspirations and for you i think it's going to be a learning curve it's not quite sure yet because you're coming into your new cycle and it's a case of um you know you're getting ready for this for for the depart of your new year and uh, a lot of things are you know are in your spirit of what you want to do in the coming year but it's unforeseen of how it's going to roll out and i would be um you know, I would be understanding with yourself that it's going to bring emotions to the surface that you're not really, you know, you wouldn't have seen coming. So be gentle with yourself more than anything else. And I think that's where you can really play smart. To just, you know, allow things, just allow things to go, let them go. You know, anything that annoys you or anything as well that seems too good to be true in a way. You know, just sort of like enjoy the moment. Be gentle with yourself. That's what I'm getting out of it more than anything else. How's the universe helping you? You've got the Ace of Cups, absolutely blinding. Because with the universe, we got the Ten of Cups and the Five of Cups. It was letting go of all, you know, the universe is sort of saying, don't worry about the past, don't worry about, you know, um, how our emotions and energies have all been turned against us in a way, or, you know, it helped to divide us. Um, you know, see the reality for what it is and, and, and engage happily. And, um, this is where you bring your beautiful heart to the situation, Virgo. Absolutely brilliant. The way you engage in relationships, when you really do engage, you engage. There's no, there's no half measures with you, Virgo. You're emotionally engaged with the relationship. And I think that's what, you're, you know, what the universe is trying to not only bring to you, but you can bring to the situation. So that's what creates the two of cups. You turn up with your cup, the universe is turning up with their cup, um, and it's gonna provide for you a very, um, 
yeah, very heartfelt engagement or uh, connection with someone that is around you. Let's have a look at what's going on. And as I say, these are the stuff that sort of like bring you out, bring you backwards, not bring you backwards, that, that can hold you back. Um, this is the negative side that if you play to the negative side, you, you know, you're going to find it difficult to manifest that nine of pentacles. And I was saying on here is sort of like, you know, just be the best example of yourself more than anything else. Don't try and sort of like beat someone else. Try and just be the best example of yourself. And here you get the seven of pentacles. Now, a seven of wands, sorry. The seven of wands is um, number seven, first of all, for me, it's a revelation moment. So you're going to understand something. You're going to understand how you actually apply yourself in the collective and manifest your beautiful future, uh, you know, that Ace of Cups uh, and the Nine of Pentacles, uh, and explore all those unforeseen emotions, those beautiful unforeseen emotions, um, by following your path. If you get caught up in trying to defend your position of who you are, it's going to distract you from your manifestation. So I would just be wary of that. Don't try and justify yourself. I would just go and live it. You know, we're, uh, you're your own judge. You're the only one who sees what you do with your own hands, like my good self. You know, so I'm the only one that can tell you what I do with these hands in reality. And that's the same thing. And I would just take that on board and follow your path forward. Okay, because you should be, and this is where the collective comes in, the good stuff is, is we got an opportunity here to really start seizing upon um, possibilities, the dreams and aspirations of tomorrow. You know, um, it's uh, ultimate, um, uh, you know, ultimate sort of um, uh, joys, basically. And we've got to nurture it sort of going forward. So within you, you get the Queen of Swords, which is opposite you on your financial side. And this comes true because you're in your autumn period and you're just starting your new, your new year. You're choosing a direction according to, according to your emotional judgment of the situation. That's what you're doing. Um, so um, you're choosing a direction which, in theory, should be towards the ultimate dream and aspirations that the... the, the the ultimate joy of being in a relationship. The ultimate situation in regards to a relationship. You know? And how's this moon going to help you to, to define it? So the moon here is sort of offered up, um, uh, a, you know, a rite of passage. It's going to be done. What, what, is, um, what is put in place will be done, as it were. Uh, and with the Nine of Wands as well, which is stopping us from going back and repeating the same things, you get the King of Wands. Now, this is really beautiful, actually. This is really beautiful. I think here, you could well be manifesting the ultimate relationship. Because you've got the King of Wands, which is like a fire energy, and you've got the Queen of Swords, which is, um, you know, um, uh, uh, air energy. So air and fire breeds for something very, very passionate. And this is you taking the lead here. So if, if you really want to be with someone, I would say it. I wouldn't hold back, basically, in, once you hit the end of August. And certainly when you hit your birthday, I wouldn't hold back. You know, I'd start manifesting what you so desire to be manifesting. And with that direction, you have taken, you're taking that direction there. That's the ultimate, um, uh, you know, the ultimate um, good side of this um, Lionsgate manifestation. And you are going to be a leader in your life. And I think this, what it pertains to a little bit to that sort of, as I said, don't try and defend your path, live your path, be your path. You know, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, let's get on to your financial sort of side jobs business and everything like that thank you very much for your support by the way uh, to this channel you can do that in a multitude of ways with uh, youtube and that sort of like subscribing liking or commenting and sharing across all media platforms that is a really good way of helping us seriously uh it sort of helps the algorithm enormously um so yeah i thank you for that um there's also links in the description below where you can get yourself uh, you can book up a um, private reading 
Um, there's several models that you can choose, so you can choose the time and date as well, according to you. Um, there's also, um, I do healing online as well, which you can book up. And there's also an email, because I'm going to be doing uh, energy workshops, which I've been doing for, I've done for hundreds of people to connect you to energy, to connect you to the universal vibration through yourself and give you a lot more, help you to give you a lot more clarity to your karmic path of where you should be going and what you should be doing. Uh, as I say, I've helped many people do this over years. So just drop us an email with that email uh, in the description and just tell us where you are in the world. So I'm gonna be doing in September, October in the UK, October and November in the US. Just drop us an email, tell me where you are, tell me how far you wish you know, you'd like to travel uh, if need be. Um, and then I will be uh, organizing workshops in the areas that correspond with the um, groups of people that are sending me emails, basically. And you will get the first to hear about the dates and times and all of that malarkey. All right, okay. So um, yeah, thank you very much for being here. Let's just jump in and see what's going on in your karmic path on your, um, on your material side. So on this, it was a case of working too hard, you know, and trying too hard. Sometimes we do try too hard. Um, and, um, you know, I think here for you, rather than trying, planning is best. You know, if you're going to put your energy into anything, put it into planning your destination. Planning what you want to manifest in the coming year. You know, and it's, once you've got that planning down, that's when you want to start, like, putting things into place. Once you start hitting your birthday season, your birthday, that's when you really should be putting it into place. Let's see how the universe is um, influencing you. Yeah, you had the um, Four of Cups. The collective had the Four of Cups and the Queen of Wands. And it was, don't look for the, the past. Don't look for um, um, justification from the past, like, sort of, like... Um, people paying things back, don't you? I wouldn't worry about that. Um, concentrating on the things that make you really passionate uh, and engaged. And here, I think they're giving you, I think the universe is giving you the rite of passage. They're helping you through because you're in that, that period which is just before your birthday. So it's like the universe is sort of saying, we know your rhythm is such, and we know that it might be difficult for you to start doing whatever you've got to be doing. So we're going to carry you through the first, um, first sort of two or three weeks of this manifestation and give you the space in order to do it, okay? Um, how, what was the things that are holding us back in this Lionsgate manifestation? And I was sort of talking about the abundance of the Ten of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands of how certain people have been accumulating our resources into very few hands. And that's going to come to the surface and we're going to see that really clearly. And this is where, yeah, it's, I don't think it's negative for you. <laughs> um, you are starting a new cycle. And it's almost like a, the, the negative thing could be that this cycle has been forced upon you. I, that's the only negative side of it I can get. And it's like, yeah, it could be a pain in the backside, kind of going, oh, I was doing this and then this happened in the world and I can't do that anymore. Well, there's a reason for that. And, but you've still got time to completely readjust yourself. And the moment you readjust yourself, it's going to be a very favourable, you know, year for you, I think, uh, Virgo, to be honest. Um, so let's just see what's going on with um, with the good stuff, basically. And the good stuff, we had the Nine of Wands, and we had the Nine of Wands quite a lot out there, twice in the reading. Nine of Wands and the Queen of Swords. So you've already got the Queen of Swords on one side, um, but the Nine of Wands is, is kind of sort of saying, the positive things is that we, we'll now know and we don't have to do it again. And we're, we're stopping, we're using it as a healthy boundary so we stop ourselves from repeating the same thing and we choose that logical evolution that you know that I've been talking about for a long time and we choose that direction and follow it and what's coming for you the three of wands in the positive side I think it's you've got time I think this is where you you know sometimes you we do overwork and we push ourselves too much so then therefore some of the work is going to be bad quality work because we've pushed over the limit if we push it just to the normal limit, it's just going to be good quality work every time. And I think this is something maybe that you need to understand. Um, and it's not a case of, 
procrastination. It's more of a case of, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and just seeing, reworking it, seeing how it fits, seeing how the comings and goings of the changing world that is around us through this Lion Gate um, and what it will do for you, basically, and see how it interacts with you. And then when we come into the moon, and this is when we're going to be fully into your birthday season, that's when we get the change of fortune and the page of wands. That's when we start engaging with our passions in a whole new cycle. And you get the Hierophant. My favourite card in the pack at the moment. It might well change in the future. But you can physically go ahead and manifest your... You can physically go and manifest your, your happiness, basically. Um, engaging with your passions um, and knowing that if you do... Um, you know, if you if, if, let's say you're making cake, if you add chocolate to it, you know, because you're passionate about chocolate, and this is where it comes into the whole sort of spirit of it as well, and the ritual of making a cake and stuff like that, that you're going to sell more cakes because you put a chocolate cake out there. You know, it's that sort of thing, it's adding a little ingredient of yourself um, to practices um, through the art of meditation, through the art of really seeing things clearly so you can sort of manifest and unify yourself with the world around you and make it into an absolutely beautiful place um, for you, uh, Virgo. Really, really nice reading. Yeah, it may be a little bit bumpy in the middle between the 8th and the 30th. I think that uh, is because of your autumn period. Um, but after that, you know, once you, once you hit, I think once you hit around about the 18th, 19th, 20th, I think that's when you're going to really start kind of going, oh, okay, now I'm playing, you know, um, 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 I'm gliding, this is, this is brilliant, um, you know, the, the energy is, is keeping me up all by itself, and that's when you can be ready to rock and roll, uh, basically. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for your support on this channel. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you for your weekly readings on Tuesday. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what comes out over the next couple of weeks for you in those weekly readings. Uh, very interesting. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget, life should be fun, so please do enjoy. <laughs>